and welcome to Safe Space. My name is Katama Tulwana Moneta and I'm here with the Lebakus. The Lebakus and we're going to talk about godly relationships. And I have here Tebiso and C. Tabile. So I met them here at this very same place. So I first met up with Tebiso. And in Tepiso's sayings, he was like, No, my wife this, my wife that. I was like, Yep. And yeah, one of them. But my wife this, my wife that. I was so shocked. And I was like, I want to meet his wife. And finally, I have the both of them here. Mm -hmm. So, guys, how has um, your marriage been ever since you got married? Uh, has there been any expectations from you guys or as a 24 like as a 21st century relationship mm. that is married mm. how do you navigate through it especially with social media telling us this and that a man should do this i'll start first with you um Tepiso, with social media saying indoor damast this and that should happen how do you navigate that um yeah i think um yeah, there's a lot of pressure for young people, especially by social media. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one thing that me and my wife are always talking about is what we um, what we expected mm -hmm. when we got married, and um, how that was fueled by a lot of discussions with other people. Yeah, like, it was just expectations. Of course, there's that thing where. Well, women are like, no, my husband must drive, my husband must do this or yeah. like that. Or he, in fact, I remember even before we got married. Um, there was a uh, 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 somebody who um, was saying that maybe like could you hold up until I have a house? Really? Yeah, or whatever. But um, I mean, you can't negate those things. You can't negate those things. You do want to get it as established as possible. Yeah. When you do get married as a man. Uh -huh. Um, but I think also there's a lot of beauty in building together. Sure. Um, yeah. There's a lot of um beauty in building your life together, building your future together, building your home together from, from the ground up. Yeah. I think it adds a certain value to your partner yeah. that you would, wouldn't have if you come into it with everything established. Yeah. So yeah, man, I think um, as a man, you do want to be ready, but um, the myth that I really want to debunk when mm -hmm. it comes to a lot of young men is that don't be afraid to get married young. Mm -hmm. True. Because marriage this thing is a faith walk yeah you know? um it requires faith mm. not everything is gonna line up mm. sure not everything is gonna be perfect mm. but isn't that just like god god mm. always asks us to do things without all the resources sure and he for he sometimes waits for us to go first and i'm gonna say this and finish but a friend of mine one who was dressing about the wedding and stuff mm -hmm. in church said this very profound thing he said god gives you bread for the road mm. he gives you what you need for the journey mm. not for the destination mm. you know, so, so yeah i was advising me to just um, take the lead. go into it mm. yeah. yeah and especially when you said that we always want to be prepared before we enter into marriage mm. we always need to have a car yes. we always need to have a house and god is saying enter as you are and yes. you guys are going to build together right. so you how how how, how has it been um, navigating the 21st century wife, especially in a generation where we have like a lot of things that are in our heads is that a man should do this, a man should do that, a man should become your provider, you mm. should always be sitting at home and tell your man's money. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how do you navigate that? And you know, how do you become a good wife to him? I think for me, um, the most important thing is that I became like a wife very young. Really? Yes. Um, I got engaged when I was 19. Oh, actually, So yeah. I was very young. So for me, the marriages that I'd seen were like older people, mm -hmm. you know, I had not seen anyone that was young, mm -hmm. like as young as I am, yeah. and we got married. So I wasn't really sure exactly how um, a wife looked like because yeah. at home my mom wasn't married. Many people around me were not exactly married mm. so i think for me the best thing that i did when i was in marriage is really to rely on the holy spirit and sure. to really rely on prayer because he taught me able to like even when you study the bible you study about that woman the third proverbs 31 yeah, woman, yeah. you study what he did what she did sorry yeah you study what she did you understand that 
only God truly understands what a wife should look like. Sure. So even if you observe other other people, maybe they, they go down and they go on their knees and all those things, maybe that may be a false humility, but you need to really honor your husband in your heart before you like say, oh, there's your plates, but then you're speaking badly about him yeah. to your neighbors and all these people. Yeah. But you need to honor, God is teaching me honor, teaching me respect, teaching me all these things that I had not necessarily seen. Sure, and, and, and another thing on the Bible, it says that wives should honor. Yes should re submit to their yes. husbands yes. and husbands are supposed to lay their lifestyle just the same way as jesus did yes. for the church mm. you know what does honoring and respecting a man look like okay so i think with me more than what they show us in terms of like when i grew up i saw it like they were like giving the train yeah and these things. yes those, like, like, you go yeah. down <laughs> yes those things yes they are a form of honor but i feel like honor and respecting your husband it needs to come from within firstly it sure. needs to come from your heart so it's okay lord even if you may sense okay, maybe i'm not treating this person the way that i'm supposed to you can you can navigate yourself oh maybe my tone the way you speak to him the way you are saying please can you wash those dishes yeah, but maybe you're like i told you to yeah well like, maybe yeah. like your voice now becomes you know aggressive and stuff like that it's in the way in way in the way that you speak to him it's in the way that you approach him but nakona that's not something that i believe me myself i didn't learn as i entered in yeah. it's something that i'm gradually learning even sometimes when i'm feeling frustrated when i'm like oh i told my husband to take out the trash and he didn't but now i to for him to go <laughs> for me to go to him I need to know that, oh, okay, I'm feeling this way right now. Yeah. Let me, hold, please, God, can you help me approach him? Not in a way that I'm like, like this angry person right now, but let help me approach him in a way that he can hear me. He can hear me when I say, please, love, can you please take out the trash? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, it's, it's like a, in, in the way you speak, in the way you guys talk to each other, in yeah. the way that you guys treat each other. And yeah. it's just in so many other things than then just um physically like up, externally it has to first happen within your heart oh my god so, oh like we <laughs> could <laughs> <We're thirteen. laughs> and you to be so um what does loving because men are called to love right what does loving your wife look like um i think you you mentioned it uh like you mentioned a huge part of it when you talk when you spoke about um what the bible says when you mm. say husbands love your wives as christ of the church and um I'm gonna say this. Um, when we get married, right? Uh, we go to a church, and in the church there's something called an altar. Sure. Right. And if you research what an altar was in the Bible, everywhere where the Bible speaks about an altar, an altar has always been a place of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So no matter how beautiful it is on your church day, no matter how beautiful the church is, mm -hmm. an altar will always be a place where you're going to die. Child. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> So we went to the altar. I went to the altar as to be so. Yeah. She went to the altar as to. Yeah. Bible says that the two shall come together and there'll be one. So by the time we left the altar, Tepiso was dead. Mm. Was dead. Mm. Oh my god. Yeah. It was now one. Mm. Which means that for the rest of our marriage, I will always be sacrificing mm. my own will mm. for her. Mm. And that's the only way that it works. And it also doesn't work if it's only one sided. Sure. I'm, for the rest of my life, I will always be having to sacrifice. What does she want? What does she need? Every morning I have yeah. to wake up and say, How can I make life easier for her? Oh my God. How can I serve her better? How can I make sure that by prayer, um, serve the vision and the purpose that God has for her mm. every day. Mm. So it can be something as simple as what do you want to eat? I want to eat McDonald's, she wants to eat KFC. Okay, let's get KFC. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. So it can be something as simple as that, or it can be something major. Mm. I want to go work in a certain uh, country. Yeah, mm. she has a job in this country. Mm. I have to lay down my desires. Mm. Sure. For her. That's so good. I mean, that's what Christ did. Mm. He laid down his life. Because he loved, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave. Mm -hmm. So love will always require giving, giving. and will always require sacrifice. And on the tough days, which I know that this is what men are afraid of, <laughs> on the tough days where my, my wife maybe may not be having the best day, or maybe she may be agitated or irritable, yeah. not in a good mood, or and I feel like maybe um, it's not the best day. The Bible says, God says, why yet we were sinners? Christ gave his life for us. Mm. So this means that God, Christ did not wait for us 
to be pure. So mm. he didn't wait for us to stop sinning. Mm. So he died because we were we were wrong. Mm. He died because we were not okay. So I can't wait for my wife to be the perfect wife mm. for me to love her. Mm. I have to love her because of that. Mm. I have to love her. I become more like Christ mm. when I love her when she is having a bad day. Mm. So, so that's my whole secret sauce to the soul. Yeah. You know? That's you, how it works. Because most, because most men, what they do whenever a woman is having a bad day, they would rather leave the house. Mm. You know, so leave the together. house. Like, get it come together. Back, you know, I will come back when you call me when you're fine. Mm. You know, the fact that you're saying that Christ didn't wait for us to be pure mm. to die for us. That's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> This is so good, you know, because that's, that's what I want to bring out there. That yeah. marriage is not this scary, scary mm. thing. Fiala yeah. patelo, cook country food, and all of these things. This is the beauty of young couple. The like young couple and they are getting it together, together. Mm. And you say altar. The altar is where you die to self. Oh my God. <laughs> but let's take it all the way back. Okay. How did you know she was the one? Do I answer for No, you can go. Do I always have to check for a second? Oh, La Bon, Magita, I hope you are watching. I'm going to have a fan out of the blue. Okay, okay. Um, sure, we've spoken, this, we've spoken about the story so many times. Mm. Um, so, with me, uh, when I met Star, um, I was actually running away from relationships. Mm. Yeah, I had been through a lot of relationships that, not a lot, I, was, yeah. I don't want to make it seem like I was. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, 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 I had really been honest with God and I said after my, my relationship ended, it was like five years mm -hmm. of me waiting. And wait, wait, wait. Five years? Yeah. Single? Single. Yes, five years. Single. Okay. But there's a story even to that, you know. Yeah. I, was, I was running away, but the only way that I was able to stay single for five years because I'd been hurt. Yeah. So I feel like that was the major yeah. driving force to am I single. See, but I was single and it came from a place where I told God, like, Lord, obviously, okay, I have a type. Yeah, I know the type of woman that I want. Sure, but it's obvious that I don't know what I need. Sure, and because if I didn't know what I need, then all of these bitches maybe would have worked out. Mm. So I was running away from relationships at that point, and uh, we met at church. Cliche is the yeah. word. We met yeah. at church, and um, I began really like um, having really being drawn to stuff. In a sense of not like romantically, but mm -hmm. she was always where I was. I was serving in the media team at church, and she was always there. And I was leading the media team, and I couldn't make it to the certain engagements of the media team. She was always coming for me. Yeah. Um, and I began like really seeing a lot of uh, character mm. because um, going back to um, the Bible where God says, "Husband, um, it's." Blesses a man who finds a wife mm -hmm. because he finds a good thing. We yeah. almost we always misinterpret the word find. Sure. Finding does not mean that I need to go around and look. Sure. Finding means actually I discover. Mm -hmm. So I can say that I discovered my wife sure. because she just came into my life and unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, mm -hmm. and that's when I was ready to receive after a long season of being alone and God working on me. But I remember going. I used to pray a lot at the time. I still do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too. And I went to the park and I was praying to God and I was like, Lord, I, I have strong desires for this person. Yeah. I like this person and I need you to let me know if this she's the right person for me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord led me to a scripture. I think it was um what's it? Uh Abraham looking for a wife for Isaac. Mm -hmm. Um and it says that he sent his servant with camels to go look for a wife for his son. And he came to a certain area where there was a well and the mm -hmm. camels were thirsty and there's a lady who came and the lady said um sit here i'll yeah. give water to your to mm -hmm. your camels and i'll get you water too and if you do research you'll realize the camels drink a lot of water yeah so the amount of effort that it took for this lady to give the camels water spoke to her character mm -hmm. it spoke to her servitude mm -hmm. 
And I was like, okay, Lord, if you're showing me this, that means that I'm already has ticked all those boxes. Yeah. Then I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take it just from this because I need confirmation. So. At that time, I had submitted myself under the leadership of my pastor. Yeah. Manelisi, shout out, Manelisi. <laughs> And I went to him to consult him. Now, I always want to say this. I wasn't going to ask permission. Sure. I was going to ask for guidance. Sure. Because I wanted to seem like I went to ask the pastor for permission. Yeah. And I yeah. went to ask for, for guidance. And of course, he said, yeah, no, I can see you guys. I give things because she was also submitted under him. Yeah. And everything like that. And then, yeah, I was like, okay, um, I think then I should go and start, you know, being with her, dating her and courting. But now, all these years looking back, and I look back and I'm like, that scripture of the woman actually serving the the, the servant yeah. was sent. God was not necessarily telling me that Star's gonna serve me. It was actually that I'm gonna serve her. Sure. So understanding that and moving that and understanding that um seeing Star's characteristics and seeing her character and everything, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pursue a romantic relationship with her. Sure. And it's still being confirmed even now. Yeah. Um, the star that I married and dated is not the star that she is today. Yeah. And she still continues to confirm to me that I made the right choice, I made the right decision. Sure. Yeah, so I think that's how I knew and I'm still getting to know oh. that she is the right person for me. That's so good. <laughs> and you start, I think with me, um, with me, I think before Tepiso, before I met Tepiso, I was used to certain types of guys. Yeah. You know, true. they were only interested in certain things, you know, they're not really interested in you per se. Yeah, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Please change, guys. Please change. <laughs> Yeah, so I think when I met him, yeah, when I met him, I was, for some reason, I was also very drawn to him. Like, I was strongly, I didn't, not necessarily like in a romantic way per se. Hmm. Like, not, not, not in an, and I never told him. I never told you, right? I never told yeah, him. That's the first time you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> crush. Yeah, it's like a 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 crush. And I could not understand. I'm like, I just have a crush on Zippy. So, and we became friends. We became yeah. really good friends. But in the midst of us become, becoming friends, I plugged into his life really well. Yeah. Like he was serving in the media team and I got under the media team and I served in projection. You know the screen, yeah. you know in the uh, everything that's like, I did that. Yeah. And every single time, because our church was where I stayed, yeah. you know, like in the area. So he stayed for oh, years. Yeah. So usually when there was events at church and he couldn't make it, I would always be almost like in the right place at the right time. Oh. Almost as if like we were working together, but we did not plan to work together so well. Mm. So it happened like that. And I did like him, I won't lie, but I never told him. Yeah. I liked him, but I never told him. It, <laughs> on top of that, guys, let's keep when la mood. But she money. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't do it's that. Like well. Yeah, let's say well. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never, like, he never even had, I never even, like, shown any sign and stuff like that. But I remember when he came to me, um, when he told me this whole thing about him, like, being interested in me and all yeah. these things, I was genuinely, my heart was genuinely happy. I was like, Lord, Trust me, this feeling that I was feeling, he was also feeling it, but yeah. we didn't know. But the main thing that I, how I knew that he was the one is how perfectly I fit in his life. Like sure. I fit so, wow. it, it was so like a helper. You know, the Bible says that wives, like we are a helper to our husbands. I was genuinely feeling like I am helping this man. Like yeah. I am, I, I am where he, where he needs me to be, I am there. And I'm mm -hmm. not putting out of like this strenuous act. It wasn't like this thing where I felt like I'm under pressure, I'm under, mm -hmm. it was so natural to me. Yeah. It came so naturally, it didn't feel like I was, I don't know, like I was coming out of my way. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yes. You always want to. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like I wanted to impress him. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything like that. It just felt like sure. I'm just there. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's fine. I'm, I can go. It was stuff like that. So that's how I knew was I fit in so perfectly in his life. And he was just so different. You know, mm -hmm. he never, he was never there trying to like, I don't know, do funny things to me. Cause yeah. we were friends for six months. So men usually, can't be friends, okay, in my experience, you can't really be friends for that long. You Not in your experience, in your experience. Everyone experience. Usually someone's gonna call you and say, actually, I think I like you and all these things. So it wasn't like that. Netflix and chill, come to my place. Exactly. For what? <laughs> 
exactly so yeah. it was never like that with me and him he was always straight up with me and stuff like that we, we, there's no funny business in fact we spoke about God so much and just oh. growing each other and so i was like Yo, this is something different something yeah. that i've never seen this man is really just growing me yeah, yeah. Like, i feel like i'm growing i feel like i'm discovering who Uta is mm. like he's allowing me to be me not like i'm there for him and yeah. all those things so yeah so when when, when you guys got engaged mm -hmm. uh, how was it for you name one one year and say i need you to be my wife you <laughs> got say except it's heavy go marry that child you know it's, uh, it's too long Okay, I can just tell a story yeah. before the yeah. So what happened was before he actually um uh, before he actually proposed to me, we had had this discussion maybe like six months prior. Mm -hmm. where he had spoken to me barely like about marriage. Yes, he, really. He, he took me to this like um park. We sat down, and not that he was proposing, he was just saying that I have good intentions for you. Like he was just saying <laughs> already so that I know see, this is a relationship that is going to. So he's, oh, he sat me down and he's like, um, I really believe that they will, so that I know, you know, and when that happened, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> no, so I'm so surprised because a man making you chill and say, babes, just know that I have intentions of marrying you and you being what, what is this word? What is this word? Sure, like being what is the other word of sure? But being adamant mm -hmm. in the fact that he will do it. Mm. It's it's the most beautiful feeling ever and I wish all my girls can yeah feel that. So continue. I'm so surprised at your story. I'm like, guys, do you exist? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. You're going to see a lot of my facial expressions like what? Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so don't be surprised at all. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, okay. it's okay. So yeah, he took me. I yeah, well, we sat down, and that's when I first got that initial shock. Like, oh, really? I yeah, well, like, yeah. Yeah, well, before the even the engagement, engagement, because I already knew his intentions. Yeah. So when he told me that, like, I was like, okay. So this is something that I need to start like thinking about it, like yeah. you know, like preparing mentally for what he. Sure. This is this man's intention. He's not just here, like just in for us to just be together and see where this goes. Mm -hmm. He's saying for real, what he really has intentions to marry me. Okay, fine. You know that happened, and then I think since six months, ne? six months down the yeah, six months down the line. So we go to um, we go to uh, uh, a ring shop. Yeah. Ne? Together, we go to a ring shop together. My <laughs> We go to a ring shop together, but I, we weren't there to. We were just going just to check check rings out for him, for me, just in the future. When I was not thinking which was going to be so soon. Yeah. Yes. So we went to this ring shop in Menlin, and I looked at a, a, a ring, and I'm like, Zepi, so when if ever you ever come back for my engagement ring, this is the ring that I want. Oh, That's what I so I said. Like I looked at that ring, and I'm like, it was like it was calling. It was like it was made for it me. Was, <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. yeah. So. I did that and I'm like this and I even told the lady there I'm like this ring please make sure that it's just always that I genuinely love it Nick. yeah kind of not knowing that he dropped me off and he went back to buy that exact same ring I think you can I think you should take the story from here because you're the one that did all the planning and all those things yeah, yeah. okay um, yeah I think it was it was during uh, our friend's wedding actually yes like that. yeah um again of course there were those things of like if i'm gonna get the money to get married if yeah like, if i make this but the night before actually we were in a prayer meeting with all my friends mm. and they had actually just gotten married mm -hmm. and they were saying guys we didn't have money we, didn't know. we got married we didn't know how it's gonna happen mm. like, you know what if you could do it for them god you can do it for them. so yeah um we came back from Menlin. yeah i dropped her off at a place i went back to buy the ring and then that night I started sending the pictures to her aunt, her friends, saying this is what I want to do and planning around the engagement and stuff. Wait, wait, Without wait, me, yeah. Yeah. You sent out invitations or messages to be like, just for you guys to know I'm going to marry your child in no, two I, weeks. Yeah, I had to ask permission from her aunt who was a oh. guardian. Oh. Was, so I sent her saying this is what, I, this is what I'm about to do. Mm. And she gave me my, uh, my blessing. Mm. So was through the phone? Yes. Okay, okay. Her. And then yeah, I just put everything together. Uh, got a few friends on. She had always said that if she was able to get engaged, she wanted, she wanted to be around her friends. Mm. You listen too well. <laughs> <laughs> 
like you always say she always said i'm like you 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 know yes yes so yeah um it was towards the festive season i remember and some of our friends had actually gone home yeah. so i was like okay how can i do this i asked them to send me videos mm-hmm. of them congratulating her mm-hmm. and then I, uh, in the in the room where i was proposing to her um it was actually like a function that was already happening but she doesn't she didn't know that it was our engagement yeah so everybody came with uh story of no we coming to the function yeah it was an india but it was India's actually party. an india india it was they thought it was an india party but it was actually an engagement mm. party yeah. yeah i thought so, it was an india she so, thought it was an india function yes oh, so yeah. everyone was already yeah. gathered everybody so for me they gathering for the india, india function yeah. oh my god uh, yeah so yeah um um we were there and then we got a friend of ours to take you to the store while we went into the room where we were pose. Yeah. Uh it was very nice like rose petals and everything. And uh yeah, I proposed and she said yes. And <laughs> the video skip popped up and now everybody's congratulating you on the screen. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Oh yeah, I'm our best friend from KZN. Uh my friends, some of her friends were popping up and congratulating her. Yeah, she, there was like a whole uh, video, like a slideshow yeah. of a thing where it was different people. And just to say with you, I was I was so shocked. <laughs> I had never been I was like dumbfounded. Like I was like Because <laughs> ah. they were they, everyone's gathered, I'm thinking everyone is here for you know an yeah, India function. Good. Like no like it's like I'm not yeah. thinking in my mind. He didn't even leave a single clue. The only clue that I know now is that the girls that I was with, they were like, "No, you must look a certain way." Like they were like, "I'm like, we're just going to like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, fixing my hair, yeah, and I'm fixing like, everything." Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> like guys, relax. Like it's not a big deal. Yeah, yes. And then I saw these candles. There were these candles that he put on these stairs. Yeah. And I'm thinking the candles, cause in top of the India function, there was a function happening better in the church. Yeah. And so I'm thinking the candles. I don't want to church. I'm yeah. thinking, why would they just leave candles here? I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, got these candles. So it was really a beautiful, it was a beautiful oh, day. Guys. Yeah, yes. <laughs> 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 okay, my living in LA. Such a beautiful testimony. Like, I, I have, I got to say that. That's so mm-hmm. beautiful. Like, I'm mesmerized. The whole time I was like, so you thought of that? Oh my god, when he did that. <laughs> so yeah, then after the engagement came, you were Zulu, right? Mm-hmm. So there needed to be umembe, what was umembe so mm-hmm. where you guys buy her stuff, right? Mm-hmm. How did that go about and how did the Nobola go about? You can start, yeah. So uh the funny thing is that the week of Umembes, mm-hmm. the week of Umembes, so we bought the stuff, man. we bought the blankets, everything, you know, all those nice things, you know, and stuff like that. But the week of Umembes so was actually the day, that week was, uh, Usura Maposa announced um, the second wave okay. level. No, it was, I mean, COVID happened. And then that second wave, I don't know if mm. you guys remember, it was in January, yeah. around the first festive season in 2020. Yeah. Was it 20, 2021? Yeah. It was last year, yes. He announced the second wave on the week of our members. And our wedding was actually going to be combined. <laughs> our, we- our wedding. He announced that. So now all the plans had to change. Every single, all the people that we had ordered, like in terms of like the decoration, oh everything had to change. Everything was just, we ended up not having members. But... We ended up having a beach wedding. Some somehow everything just worked yeah, out. So, oh yes, sorry, 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 the nobola. Yes, yeah. we did end up having. We did have a nobola, but it was very intimate. Now yeah. instead of like being there, like because a lot of COVID, people, because yeah, of COVID years, they were still ended up having lower and it was very nice. It was really amazing. I never knew that nobola is actually not serious. Mm-hmm. Like it's very funny. Like people are like laughing. It's just, <laughs> I always yeah. used, used to think that it's like this serious thing where people are coming and they are gathering. Yeah. But actually, it's very fun. You yeah. know, we got to wear those um blankets. So that they can choose you. Yes, yeah. And they didn't pick me, and my cousin got married. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But during the week, luckily, I was praying to God. I'm like, Lord, how are we gonna do this? And luckily, this amazing, beautiful um place in Durban that had like this. Um, like almost like all glass, mm. and all glass, and you have this beautiful big hall. And when you look like when you look through the glass, there's this beautiful beach behind us. Yeah. So it just ended up working so well. We invited our friends and family. We weren't gonna have it as big as 
like the wedding wasn't as big as it was going to be yeah. but all of our friends and family and everyone that was meant to be there was there so it ended up working out very well actually all things work together mm. yeah that's all that's ringing in my head mm. yeah and with you you were saying that you were not financially ready for marriage yeah um yes financially i wasn't ready i think that's the the importance of um following god when it comes to these things is that he provides mm -hmm. because god provided for me in a major way he provided for me for the first time when i shipped into kobe to my mom i drove from here to kz and i don't know if i'm coming back <laughs> but wait, wait, you, you drove from here to kz without uh not knowing how i'm gonna come back you have had to come back. <laughs> your faith <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's important yeah. to hear God when it comes to these things. Yeah, not just. But just like He provided for me, then He provided for the wedding as well. Yeah. Um, we were actually waiting for God to do something mm -hmm. all the way until like a month before the wedding. Yeah. Uh, because our Ebola and the wedding happened on the same day. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, like that's good. Yeah. We wanted to just do everything on the same day. Yeah. And literally, towards the the wedding date, the money just came. Sure. Yeah. All of, like, all of it just came. It was a miracle. Um, so it was a, we had a miracle. You know, mm, yeah. Um, but if that sounds like if if God is for it, then it'll work out. You know, right, uh, yeah. My responsibility was to just have faith for it. Because mm, sure. I wouldn't lie, there were times where like you get nervous. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna ask you that. How did you navigate <clears throat> that? You being doubtful that God will actually show up for you. Yeah. Especially now you're like, I'm going to embarrass my soon-to-be wife I if I yeah, don't pull yeah. up with money. Yes. You know, like how did you navigate that? Funny story is that I didn't even have a job when that happened when I got engaged. Mm. We we did really miss that part. Hectic. Yeah, wow. I didn't, I didn't have a job when I got engaged, so my whole family and everybody was like, "How are you gonna do this?" Yeah. <laughs> my grandmother was calling me like, "I'm not but you're not I'm afraid of yeah. And I just kept on saying, "God will provide. God will provide. God will provide." But I, I feel like it was very intentional yeah. for me to go through that, um, because. He really showed up in a way that I could have never thought that he would. Yeah. Not a saint, except for the wedding ring yeah. and everything else. But mm, I was just so graceful, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, he came through those moments, though, when I was trying to figure out how it's going to happen. It was very important for me to just hold on to God's word. So you're saying that the only thing that you popped up was money for the ring? Money for the ring. Money for the Lobola. Money for the Lobola was the was the king. Mm. Uh, the only thing that I, I mean everything came out the car to go to KZN, the H1 to take everybody to KZN was paid for. To the toll gate on the road, to the e tax. Um the the guy who actually I went to go get the to get the H1 fan to take everybody with me to KZN and when I got there he's like, I'm gonna call petrol fill, the car has an e-tag. I don't have to worry about talking. This is my wedding gift to you. My dress was already paid for. The dress was paid for. Um, Yo, it was. It was. It was, it was amazing. It was just enjoy. As we say, everything just came together. Everything just came together. I got fine. I got. I had a bursary in it that wasn't even giving me. That wasn't giving me money the whole year. Yeah. That time, it paid all, of, all of the money that they were supposed to give me these whole months. They gave me in one month and that was that much and i didn't even really need it all this month i really needed it that much but now it was like in like in the back then yes place. like all the, in that specific time not even like later in that week or like i think two weeks prior to the wedding and we really needed that because, because you need money when it comes to all these unnecessary things about weddings that they certain things that come up you like you need to go drive this one from here like there's unnecessary things that pop up sure. so there's a lot of money that's with black weddings yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And I think just to say, I think that's one of the things that make marriage seem so impossible for, sure. for young men. Mm -hmm. So if you're a young man and you're like, when we're going to get money for love on a phone, you're like, oh, might as well just be out here just yeah, you know, yeah. Like, doing what I need yeah. to do. So I feel like we have made marriage, like, I feel like in today's world, we have made marriage so impossible. Mm -hmm. sure. It's not the money, it's family, not getting along. Yeah. It's not, this is not what we had in, in mind for our daughter. It's, yeah. it's um, where's the money gonna come from? Where are you gonna live? We're gonna do this. 
So we've made it so impossible for young people to get married that when a young man thinks about getting married, it's like, ah, uh, I'm never gonna do that. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing with black parents, when you say, Mama, I wanna get married, don't, mm -hmm. don't call problems that are far away from you mm -hmm. to you. You understand? They always um, um, picture this marriage as if, yeah, we sing a mm -hmm. And while it's a beautiful thing, and especially if it's godly rooted, you know, like you were saying earlier, that you don't even feel like umakoti. Mm. You 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 fit in so well. The, the mother, your mother, does not make her feel like you have to wake up at five a.m. Yeah. Clean the whole patio, clean all the tiles, kajiki. Yes. Well, you know, <laughs> like such things. <laughs> <laughs> such things. All, all of those unnecessary things and the fact that she made you feel like you are my daughter mm. that's the most beautiful part of it all so you got married now you're stepping into this new thing i'm going to have this person living with me forever and ever amen <laughs> how how was how that move in was were you excited and you're like oh my god a new roommate? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how was it? How, how was the feeling? Uh, well, it was exciting. I yeah. mean, that's the most exciting thing for me because yeah. we were going to get to be with each other like all the time. Yeah. You know? But I think when you get married and you know you get there and you guys are always together, yeah, well, you notice certain things about your husband, he doesn't, yeah, because I used to live with females. So females, yeah. everything is like spot on. Yeah. Everything is, you know, so you notice that your husband, Kape, does not do this or does not do this. So, not that he, now he's much better. Nah, <laughs> yeah, he listens. Now he's much better, you are much better. Yeah. So, you notice those little things that you No, she's not going to get there. Yeah. yeah. So, it was just that for me. Like, you notice a lot of things that you notice about each other, like that you didn't notice in the dating season because sure. you couldn't you couldn't have because we didn't stay together we were never like at night together like yeah. at night so we used to leave each other like i was six season yeah. i go to my place so it changed a lot because now i was with this person all the time yeah know? and i think we learned so much about each other we yeah. learned i saw his insecurities he saw my insecurities we saw each other in a different yeah lens. yeah you know when you see Is a person you? you're like oh okay like now i know you like i feel like i'm getting to know you you yeah. now that we are always like constantly in each other's yeah. um like we're always together I think. yeah so I think that's mainly what changed with I really got to know him mm. better than ever in the dating phase. Like in sure. the dating phase I knew him, but I think when I got when I when we got married, I really knew him and I knew how to serve him well. Mm. Like when I knew what he needed, I know like I know my husband, I know how to speak to him, how ever what mm. you get you, you, you get to know and he knows me because in the sense of me like when I'm studying, when I'm writing and I'm stressed and I'm feeling all these things and he knows maybe that I just need I don't know, a walk or something, yeah. or I need my McFlurry or whatever. Yeah, 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 <laughs> he can go and he comes back. And, yeah, but you will just get to know each other in a deeper way, you know? Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I think um, we had very strong boundaries. Like, for example, she never slept over at her place. Mm. Uh, we never, she never stayed over at night until we were married. Lau! <laughs> No sleepovers. Get into it. You have to sleep over, guys. Sleep over your time about 12 and your day. You only sleep over at your man's place when you are married to him. Period. Yeah. You can continue. No, yeah. So she never we established from the get go that we're not gonna do that. Um, sure. And I think what that led into is that when we did eventually start living together, it was like, okay, boom. Yeah. Here now, mm. and we're learning each other and everything like that. Um, but as I say, I think maybe it's a bit different for a guy because for me, I need to like kind of like set up the nest, yeah, to make it that she is yeah. most comfortable. So everything that she needed and everything that she wanted, I had to make sure that it was there and adjust to living with a woman, you know, mm. adjust to. I can't just leave, you know, yeah. the sink. I can't just put my toothpaste, my toothbrush here. I need to put it back in there. Yeah. Thingy. Yeah, yeah. You, you said something and adjust that you are um, living with a woman. Mm -hmm. Some men will always feel like, I'm married now. You have to do everything in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, as a man, how do you navigate that? And how do you see love in terms of that? Because a man will just sit on the couch. A woman will cook. 
We'll clean the house. We'll water the garden. We'll take out the trash. A man, animal PS5 or animal. Yeah. <laughs> So, how, 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 how is it? I think it, 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 it comes back to the whole submission thing. Sure. Like, women are afraid of sometimes being married because of what submission means. Mm. And I think submission has been really um, misinterpreted. Sure. It's not a submission in terms of like, my wife must do everything now. Yeah. It's not an oppression. Mm. We are equal. Mm. You know, we are equal. Of course, God says that the man is the head and the wife must submit. It's a role based thing. She has certain roles, I have certain roles. But that does not mean that I can't wash up the dishes. Sure. It doesn't mean I can't mop the floor or do the laundry or do whatever. Mm. Because I'm setting up the environment of the house mm. to whereby she can make it home. Sure. So if I'm setting up that, then I need to make sure that I do everything. And, and by me serving her, it means that I have to go low sometimes and let her come up. Mm. Or sometimes I need to come up and let her go and she goes low. Mm. So I can't wash dishes. I can't clean the house. I can't do such and such. Because it's not, I'm not going to bring my wife into my home and be like, okay, now I'm going to sit yeah. on the couch yeah. and you do everything. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's. We are a team. Mm -hmm. We tackle things together. From we have different strong, different strong points and weaknesses. For example, I'm not good with money. Yeah, she is very good with money. <laughs> saving. I'm talking about savings. Budgeting. <laughs> yeah. Everything. So in that area, she dominates, and really, there has been an in, in, an increase in that area because she is so strong in that area. Mm. Um, also, maybe she is not good with. I can't think of something that you know. <laughs> Emotions. <laughs> Emotions. Yeah. So when she's having a stressful day or stressed about I can add balance and stuff. Sure. Let's take you away from the books or the book or something. Mm. So you can come back and focus. So mm. it's equal and like it's equal. Like we I'm still the husband. I'm mm. still the leader. Mm. You know. Uh, somebody said this very well. He said, um, I am the CEO. Mm. Right? And you are the executive, so you execute what I say. Mm, the vision. Um, the vision. Mm -hmm. Like I, I give the vision, you execute it. But that doesn't mean that I can't come and help you execute it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's just that, like um, making sure that you're a team. I'm pretty sure that like, after such wisdom. <laughs> Like let me give music I am no, I want to enter into this thing. <laughs> Beautiful almost. You know, and especially if God is in it. Yeah. Yeah, and especially if both of you guys hear from the Lord. Because sometimes you might be mad at him and you can take it to the Lord. It's like mm. you know. And he can be mad at you and be like, Oh, you see this wife you've given me, you know. So it's always Nice that honey communicates to the outside world that but you take the matches to the Lord so that God can deal with the both of you differently. So that when you get sit down and discuss the matter, Lifana Grace. Yeah. So that is beautiful. So I'm going to ask them a couple of questions. Biblical questions. Relationship type of questions. Because by means I can't ask them who was single in the Bible. <laughs> like I have to ask them like proper questions, uh, so I'm going to ask them um four multiple que uh, multiple choice questions. So the first one: Who did Ruth marry after her first husband died? Was it Boaz? Was it Solomon? Or was it Naomi? Or <laughs> La Mama, when you have God as the foundation of your relationship, you know such things. Like I'm sure when I said before I even said Boaz, they already like kickstarted it. Boaz. Okay. <laughs> How many years did Jacob have to work for Rachel? Was it two years, eleven years, or fourteen years? Fourteen years. Get yourself a wife that knows the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say to you. Get yourself a wife that knows the Bible. Yeah. Let's get in yeah. Okay, the next one. What lie did Abraham 
Huh? What? Did, sorry. What did Abraham ask his wife Sarah to tell the king when they relocated to another place? Okay. Did she ask Sarah to tell the king Hore she was Abraham's wife, or she was Abraham's mother, or she was Abraham's sister? <laughs> can they just get one home? Uh, yeah. Like, okay, I probably will let this one, you guys are gonna get it right. Whose wife did King David commit adultery with? Uriah, Gideon, or Solomon? Uriah. Uriah, I even said it wrong. Right. Uriah. <laughs> Uriah, guys, oh my god. They have killed it. Every single question, yeah. they've answered it correctly. So, very, very, this is a godly relationship. I don't know what else you need as a confirmation that this is a godly relationship. <laughs> so, um, as a type of motivation, a type of, you know, I'm going to start with you. As a 21st century wife, and what you have challenged, what you have experienced, and all of that, what would you tell people who are afraid to get married? Um, or what, what you would be motivating them? Yeah, to, I mean, they, they have the guy, the guy who wants to hold a king, <laughs> he has intentions, like you said, how to be so did it, you know. But now they're scared of the aftermath, the family, the what, 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 what. What would you tell them, yeah, as a motivation to them? So I'd say that mainly trust in God, um, trust in the Lord, really make um, prayer a priority in your life because. Because it's a new thing, you mm -hmm. get to say. As you don't know the future, you don't know what lies ahead. You don't, you don't know. Um, how can I? How can I put this? Maybe I'll just say it with my experience. Yeah. You don't necessarily know with me and God. I never knew. Was, okay, how is this episode gonna treat me after mm -hmm. this? How is this gonna happen? Yeah. But I knew when I started praying. I knew when I started just seeking Him and seeking His face. He was like, trust in me. Do not trust in the people. Do not trust in your husband. Do not trust in, trust in me. Trust that I will not put you in places that you are not meant to be in. Trust in me that I will not hurt you. Trust me that I will not give you a person that will hurt you. Do you get me? So for me, I just navigated that way. I navigated really in prayer. I navigated really in just staying, staying firm in him because he's the only one that knows the future. Sure. We don't really know it, you know. We're just out here chancing. Yeah. Trying with this one. Just never yeah, getting to know yeah, it. Yeah, no. Estimate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So just rely on him. He'll show you. Like he showed me. Yeah. Said, okay. Yes, you can trust this man. And I did. And it's been wonderful. Yeah. Like so far, it's been wonderful. So my main um uh, uh, advice to young women is just really stay close to him. Stay sure. close to the Lord. He will direct you. Will guide you. Not only in your marriage, but in just you yourself, your personal growth by yourself into your own purpose. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And ooh, <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> that was beautiful. And 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 you, Tabiso, um, um, as men who are, they want to get married, but when they look at the finances, they're like, oh my god, mm. no way, there's no way possible. So I'm just gonna be for the streets mm. until I figure myself out. Then after playing in the streets, then that's when I can commit myself to something else. Um, what would you tell men? Young man, um, yeah. I think just um, just exactly what I said, right? When it comes to guys, I think trust in God. Never really like trust in God. Submit your relationship sure. or your dating life mm. or your sexuality to God, mm. and believe and know that He's the one that knows exactly um, when the time is, how it's gonna happen, and when it's gonna happen. Um, we trust God for all manner of things. Um, for jobs and everything like that, yes, finances. But God has a resource for even people. Sure. He will resource you with people. He will resource you with putting with the right person. Mm. And um, I think the biggest thing that, as a guy, as a man in the 21st century, is that you need to do is really submit ourselves into God's hand. Sure. Because he's the one that knows the brokenness, mm. the traumas, the issues, the things that you or broken inside of you when it comes to being married. Um, yeah. I always tell my wife that whenever God gets ready to introduce you into something, He will always introduce it with people. Sure. For me to desire marriage as a man, I had to be introduced to people who are married, mm. young, mm. who modeled it well. Mm. And by so doing, I was able to say, you know what? 
I desire that. I want to have a healthy marriage. I want to be in a marriage where I don't desire to be with anybody else but my wife. Mm -hmm. And only God could do that. God put me through the process. He worked on me. He worked on me as a husband. I was. A, I became a husband before I got married. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because he worked on my mind. Like so now, even when me and my wife are not getting along, um, she is able. If I'm wrong, she is able to go to God as your child, your son. Yeah. And because I'm submitted mm. and I'm, I'm I'm trusting in Him, mm. I'm open to His correction, sure. and I can come and apologize mm. and say I'm sorry. Mm. So that can really happen if I'm submitted under God's um, authority and His leadership. Mm. And I can only lead as a husband because I'm led. Mm. I can't just be out here making decisions mm. because I have a whole person to be responsible for. Mm. So I needed to be under Him. I need to be led by him and submit to him even if it doesn't feel okay mm -hmm. even if it's difficult even if i don't have enough mm -hmm. but i lay my will and i lay my desires onto him and i tell him that look i didn't even know her but i was praying for her and eventually god led me or brought her to me um and yeah i think just in closing i'm just getting like a, a scripture from genesis when um god gave Eve to eight, Eve to 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 Adam, and the Bible says that um, um, before God said it's not good for man to be alone, mm. and after He said that He didn't bring Eve, mm. He first gave Adam animals to name, and in so Him naming the animals, God, the Bible says that He gave the animals and He He did that to see what He would name them, and whatever He named them, so those animals. So, so that was a sense of like God wanting to see is does Adam have the same mind as me? Sure. Will he say this is a lion if I already know it's a lion? Mm. So in Adam saying that only after Adam did that, then he was fit enough for Eve. Mm. God is very protective over his daughters. Mm. Very that's why if you mistreat his daughters, the blessings get shut off. Mm. True. So he's very protective. So he needed to make sure that the environment was right. Adam needed to be in alignment with God. Mm. So he needed to be submitted. Mm. And not only that, but before he gives Eve, he puts him to sleep. Mm. Meaning that Adam, this is not in your control. Mm. So I'm the one that's gonna bring her to you. Mm. Don't go running. Mm. Don't go seeking and looking. Mm. You just be about my business, mm. what I've given you to do, and she will come. So he puts her to sleep. He takes her out of him, mm -hmm. he makes her, and then he brings her to him. And he presents, God will present the mm -hmm. person to you. He presents her to him. Mm -hmm. And then when Adam sees, his eyes are open, he discovers. He mm -hmm. says, this is my wife. And then they become one. So it's in that, it's in being with God. And because she's my rib and she's separated, there's some things that I will never understand about her. So, sure. but because God has submitted, God will be like, This is what she's feeling, mm -hmm. this is what she's going through. I need God to make this work. So, be submitted under God as a man, and He will do the best. Amen. Amen. I don't have anything else to say, but whoa, what? Look, really? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was so good uh, like i got to say that one thing that i've taken away from what you said the both of you is trust in god trust in god lay your plans like trust in god by break it down no i break it down no go ahead i'm my eyes this guys wow oh you know what when god and Lisa no Pretoria, it was for the purpose of meeting people that are running Jesus Church. Get on the interview one by one. Jesus Church, you're your. Jesus Church, go fella. And if you are watching this video and you haven't even subscribed to Jesus Church, child, what you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing in life? Bona, Jesus Church. My wife this guy, eh, must more I 
came here to literally <laughs> look for a marriage again. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I like the fact that you both are submitted to God. And that what that is exactly what makes marriage easier when you're submitted to God. Like you said, being submitted under Him makes it easier for you to understand what she's going through. Mm. And her being submitted to God makes it easier for, for, for her to navigate how you want to be talked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's God will bring it all together, man. Mm -hmm. God will bring it into completion. And it's not like marriage is perfect, yes. but it's good when you have somebody in your home has destined for you guys to be together That's with. Right. It's lovely. And I hope you guys this is for people who are especially young people as young as them getting married and being committed to being with each other every single day for 365 days it's not easy mm. sitting next to somebody you don't like at the moment it's not easy it's not for the chance takers like it's not easy but I am um, I don't know if I should say if I'm proud. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you. I, I, I'm proud of the journey in Oho. You guys have committed to each other that I'm, we are going to do this. Do that, do us apart. And when we entered the altar, we said we are dying to both of our needs, mm -hmm. to both of us, and we are going to serve each other. There's this other guy I was working with that. The reason why there's a high rate of divorce and stuff like that is that people forget to be of service mm -hmm. to one another. That's right. Yeah, so we, we should always remember to be of service to one another, to reciprocate. You're always receiving, but you're not doing anything back yeah. to show him that, yes. you know what, I appreciate you. Yeah. So then the fact is, I don't know. I don't know, guys. You blessed me with such an amazing episode. And from Safe Space, which is me, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> Giving, give it up. I don't know if you're going to clap on one thing for the Lebakus. And from me, Kakamotulana Monete, we out.